Good evening, guys, and uh, welcome back to the House of Bread. Uh, I'm Matiyahu. Uh, in my mother tongue, Mateus. Um, in English, that would be Matthew. Um, I come to you tonight relatively late. Uh, I actually did the whole recording, almost an hour. And uh, I dashed out to um, go and collect someone and... Uh, the Lord said to me, do it over. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this again. Uh, the Lord has uh, laid on my heart to just introduce myself to you. Um, in yesterday's video, you actually got to see a whole lot more of me than um, maybe even than what I was comfortable with. But... Uh, So today the Lord said, I must just introduce myself. Um, in the first um, recording, uh, there was word that I shared, um, that I received this morning. And uh, you know what I read about Abraham this morning? Taking Isaac up onto Mount Moriah. And uh, the Lord was just wanting to see if I was willing to speak that word out. And then he said, do another one and leave that out. Um, so I was also instructed as I introduced myself to let my hair hang loose. Um, if you'll permit me, you've seen it. Uh, I'm not used to having it loose in my face um, in regular circumstances. Uh, so I would like to just put it up and um, just be able to speak to you guys face to face. Um, uh, so what is the relevance of the hair, you may ask? A lot of the things that you're going to hear on... Um, the channel of House of Bread is going to be faith-based. Um, it is. It is not what the Lord expects of you to do. A lot of the things that we do outwardly is to reflect something inwardly. Uh, commitments made, and I'll speak on the head tonight. I hope I remember, because it's also one of the reasons why the Lord wanted me to reshoot this video. Um, so, I'm supposed to introduce myself, so I'm going to give you a short breakdown just from where I'm coming from. Uh, and you probably find that uh, there is a bit of a tone difference between today and yesterday. Um, We are presented with different circumstances, uh, different circumstances every day. Uh, some days are a little bit harder than other days. Uh, we confront it with more, and today is today is one of introduction. Now, there might be things that is relative, um, uh, and we're going to try and go through this video in in the spirit. And let's get into uh, the introduction. Um, I was uh, named Matthijs Johannes Groesbeek um, by my parents, uh, obviously Groesbeek being the surname, uh, it is of Dutch um, descent. Um, I speak Afrikaans, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, a native, well, native language, it, uh, it's only spoken in South Africa, apart from those um, of my of, of my heritage that have uh, gone into other countries, but uh, it is literally um, it's born in South Africa. Um, Matthias uh, Johannes uh, is Matthew John. Uh, it's uh, relatively common names, but uh, if you've got any names like that, M Matthew um, and John or 
uh, there's a couple of variations to these things. You might actually learn something about your name today because uh, what the name means actually has a huge relevance. Uh, Matiyahu, which is the Hebrew for Matthew, uh, Matthes, uh, means gift of God. Um, Johannes or John, um, Johannan. Now, once again, even in Hebrew, there's multiple uh, reiterations of these names. You've got Matatya, um, all these different um, uh, ways to pronounce it, but it means the same thing. So, Matiyahu means gift of God, and Johannan or Johannan is um, grace of God. Uh, these things will become important as we go through the rest of the testimonies that will probably come out in um, partial testimonies uh, and we will probably either recapture yesterday's and build from there on out or it will be a full set of um, episodes uh, covering uh, my testimony from a young boy until the grey hair that you see today. Um, what can you expect in those testimonies? Um, as you saw yesterday, there, uh, uh, there's traumatic events that have played out in my life and uh, yesterday just like two or three was mentioned. Um, uh, there's much more um, behind that. Uh, in the 90s I was hit in the face uh, eight times uh, with a baseball bat. Um, it, 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 there's a load more, a load more. A brief background, um, before the Lord called me into service and uh, as I spoke to you yesterday to also take care of my mother, I was a, I was a, um, a photographer, a wedding photographer, um, events and uh, corporate photographer and then of course you've got uh, uh, some of your glamour type of uh, um, photo shoots that was done like matric farewells those type of things uh, but that is in the past um, I was a policeman for 10 years and the South African police service um, uh, there will be some testimony coming in the coming days, weeks or months, depending on how the Lord wants to do this. And um, we will look at that section of my life. Uh, there was also retail moments where I was in retail management. Uh, there was times that I was in um, uh, general management, um, IT um, services, those type of things. And then um, this last section um, before I was called to what I'm doing now, which is um, a labor of um, servitude. Um, the photography one was the big one. Um, at that stage I was, uh, and this is one of the things, uh, the things in the previous video that, that I didn't mention, and that was that um, I actually went by uh, Matt, which is just an abbreviated part of my of my name. Um, I, the Lord says I must tell you why. Uh, I've gone over to Matt instead of the uh, people used to call me Tace, or uh, I suppose the English version of that would be like Theo. Um, um, yes, uh, which is relatively. Uh, the Theo or the taste uh, points to um, the term God. So people were literally calling me God. That, that was the name that they were calling me by, Theo, um, Tais. Um, so I went over to Matt and then at the time when I started with the photography, um, it was like a phase over moment. Uh, I was in a, I was in a, a temporary workplace that I was highly, uh, yeah, you know, I had to be discreet uh, going forward. Um, and uh, I went by an alias um, just to separate also public life from private life. And I was known as Matt Stern or Matt Stern Photography. Um, and um, 
And that is basically where, shall we say, where the, where the walk to this, uh, this moment of, you know what, enough um, came. Um, okay, so the map part is then obviously just gift. Um, so I would much rather people, uh, if they want to abbreviate or shorten my name, rather call me Gift or Matt than calling me God. I'm not God. Um, so I was at this relatively, um, I was at this relatively prideful place. Um, being recognized in in public spaces and you know people making a fuss about a a person and to put it plainly you know that started going to my head um pride you know uh, almost that thing of you know don't you know who i am but not quite at that level but it was well on its way to to that um this happens when the self is boosted out of control. Um, so actually just before um, COVID happened in 2020, um, already there was, this, there was this higher interest in spiritual things. The Lord was already calling me to, 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 to service in the sense of, you know, calling me to my quiet time in the morning again. And uh, to set aside time for him. Um, and there was this conflict that was starting to, 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 to kick in between what I was doing for a living as well. And my spiritual life. Because I remember when the Lord said to me, Exodus 20, uh, you know, thou shalt not make any image um, of anything in the heavens, on the earth, or even under the earth, thou shalt not make an image thereof, and neither shalt thou bow down to it. Something to that effect. And in the beginning, you know, this was perplexing because, I mean, this was my income. And um, I was reluctant at first because I thought, you know what, a person's got to earn a living. And... Um, trying to make sense of it, all of that. And um, the more I looked at it, the more I was convinced that, yeah, no, this was this was imagery. Uh, this was making images. And um, the images that uh, I was being hailed for uh, creating, you know, there was a form that a person can, under their definition, see it as some sort of, like, worship uh, and, and it's a complicated matter because it is being hailed as are you good at this or you know any terminology that can be uh, inflating a person's um, ego um, and then the lord says i must um, just complete that thought before i go on to the next one so Later on, I discovered it was actually not that image that the Lord was talking about. The Lord was actually talking about the image that was being created in me. This prideful man, this this man that stood in the eye. Um, separate, separate from God's calling. So it is not that it was like a complete wicked thing that was taking place uh, or anything like that. But what was forming in me was hailing the beast or as some say, I think Ale Mozuli call it the sin maker, the, the flesh. Um, it was giving more attention to that than maybe what was healthy for my soul. So this was under consideration, but during COVID, I mean, you know, one man business, um, that type of thing was not really permitted in that time. And it was like that. It was like the last straw on the camel's back. You know, uh, what the, the straw that broke the camel's back, something like that. And um, 
then in 2020 on Father's Day, my mother ate something that uh, gave her a severe reaction and then a lot of the underlying things kicked in and she at the end of that she was uh, bedridden and we almost lost her and um, but by the grace of God she pulled through and but did require assistance so I'm not saying this so that people would look at me and say oh you know any praise or anything like that it is it, it is what needed to happen it is I had to step up and I went from this position of where people and even I myself would place this honor or this value in myself that was unhealthy um, and that was the image that was the problem So the Lord took me from that place in my life and he brought me in to become, to come into a position of servitude where somebody was literally dependent on me for the movement of their body. Um, every glass of water, every cup of tea, every meal. And luckily, they, I mean, I'm not alone in the house. I don't do it all by myself and I'm very grateful for the family that helps. Um, but essentially during the day at least um, I'm on my own um, what it did permit however is to take that which started just before COVID for me to get back and more involved in the word start reading the Bible over and um, I don't know when was the first time when I actually um, made the commitment just to start reading the Bible through and uh, just over and over and then at a stage I was getting that you know while I was reading in the Old Testament my soul was yearning for stuff out of the New Testament and I would miss uh, uh, my, my soul would have need for the words of the prophets or Psalms and so when you go to the blog um, I think uh, I, I can't remember the the link off my head I will put it in the description box um, you'll see that there's multiple levels of reading in my daily reading and um, so I, I get up relatively well early-ish um, around about uh, usually around about six o'clock in the morning and then I go into a process of um, reading the Bible and then but spiritually reading it um, reading it in, in, in the awareness of the Holy Spirit in the moment and um, then also permitting the Holy Spirit to explain to me what I'm reading um, sometimes uh, the Holy Spirit will say well research that what what is that um, without that I probably wouldn't have found out half of the stuff that I know today regarding you know let's take for instance the Nephilim um, I wouldn't have had such a or a deeper knowledge about how these things came to be. Yes, and I said things. Um, so then I would read, and then of late, what the Lord will do is, is, is that there's comments that that are then or notes that I then leave on the um, Bible app, and uh, the Lord have added to those that 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 befriend me on the Bible app and that have been sort of like following um, the notes that I made and then of course there is this Bible journaling that is taking place every day so that's why when you go to the block you'll see that there's daily reading and and I say again it's a spiritual reading because I know that there's got to be introspection um, at the end of it and then also how do these things that that I read at once speak to each other what does it confirm to each other and also up until maybe like two weeks ago there was still this constant process of also keeping watch on what's happening in the world and that is sort of faded a little bit more now um, that 
with, shall we say, the change that the Lord has brought with me being a little bit more public than what I'm still comfortable with. But the Lord speaks and we obey. Um, so then there's, there's that, um, the writing, uh, journaling, um, waiting on the Lord, waiting to hear. And in the beginning it was very complicated because the there is so many misconceptions about what it means to hear the, the word of the word of God come to you. Um, it is it is a it's an odd thing to define. Um, but more and more so, the things that the Lord brought to me would be confirmed around me. Um, even visions that I saw maybe as far back as fifteen years ago. Um, others, others would have, and then I would find out about it. Or um, word that the Lord gave me in the privacy of my room uh, would then later in the day be confirmed by somebody on the other side of the of the of the globe. Um, basically, in many instances, word for word. So over this period, the Lord had really built up my faith in trusting what I hear and how to hear it. <laughs> There's a couple of times where, you know, the Lord will just check if you're paying attention. Um, <laughs> you know, pick up the pen, put down the pen, pick up the pen, put down the pen. Uh, 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 and these things are all to cause, uh, I have come to learn by now. Um, The Lord said to introduce myself. So there's a couple of things here that I'm going to share that necessarily uh, that I would not necessarily really want to 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 say in everyday life. But uh, the Lord said that I must say um, these journals. Uh, oh, I did a quick calculation the other day when the Lord was speaking to me on the matter. Um, is run about three thousand A4 pages uh, in writing. Um, I've always got to have a pack of pens, um, black and blue, and um, it is not, it's not a small thing. Um, all right, um, so let's get to the hair. Now this will also be part of the testimony that goes out. Um, it is attached uh, to something that happened in 1996. Um, when I made a vow to the Lord and uh, then here in the last two years it have just been solidly been placed in um, we'll have more about that if you want to read up about it it is called the vow of the Nazarite it is in numbers I uh, can't remember uh, number 13 comes to mind but I'm not sure it is in numbers you can just do a research on um, um, the vow of the Nazarite um, the type of people that uh, took vows, uh, the vow of the Nazarite, uh, Paul did it twice. Um, uh, John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Um, Samuel, um, Samson. Um, actually, probably the best uh, best example of uh, that would be Samson. Um, whose strength was in his hair. But it is not about physical strength only. It is it's spiritually attached. Um, and actually the vow of the Nazarite is a vow of separation unto the Lord. Um, and it is usually for a specific reason. So um, according to the law, it will be for a set period of time. There is a ritual that takes place beforehand. It's a ritual that takes uh, place afterwards. Now, those rituals have ex essentially been excluded um, from my process. Uh, I, suppose, I suppose it's probably got to do with the fact that it is in the new uh, dispensation um, and this time of grace. So, um, but essentially what it is, is not allowed to cut um, the hair and uh, no grape products, so no wine, no 
uh, grape juice, no raisins, no grapes in your fruit salad, um, that type of thing. Uh, and then um, also and not to go anywhere close to anything that is in a state of decay, so anything that's dead, um, to stay away from that. It is um, something of, um, it's a segregation, uh, it is a separation, it is a sanctification process uh, where the outwardly and this very specific uh, type of, almost like a fast, is keeping you um, in the reminder that you are focused on God. Now, the likes of Samson was a Nazarite for all his life. Um, so was Samuel and John the Baptist. Uh, Paul did the, 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 the process twice, uh, from what I could discover this far. Um, there's other people that we assumed were Nazarites. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, probably Elijah. Um, it's a very personal thing and it is just an outward reflection of an inward faith. Um, it resembles something that that means something to my faith. It is, it is not something that I expect anybody else to do. It is not a practice that is commonly done. Um, although I must admit, I am seeing, I am seeing quite a few Christian men with long hair these days. I, I haven't been in a position to, well, I haven't been probably too ashamed, or not ashamed, or what is the right word, um, embarrassed to go up to them and say, oh, all right, well, listen, why is your hair uh, long? Uh, you know, in the hope to have something of commonality or something like that. But that is not why the vow of the Nazarite is taken. The vow of the Nazarite is is something between God and you. Now, you might also find things like growing the beard. Um, the Lord would call the if you if you in the presence of the Lord, the Lord will call on you what He wants you to do. Whether it is writing, whether it is, I'm currently in the process of um, exercising to blow the to blow the ram's horn. Uh, the process to learn how to blow this thing. Um, I'm not doing too too shabby, but I'm still battling because I've got plastic teeth, um, which will also come out in the testimony why that is the case. Um, As far as that goes, is, so the Lord has just called me for this time of separation and I've had time to probably spend in research and that type of things more than what the average person gets to do. Uh, so sometimes things happen in our life that actually brings about conditions that permits us to stand in the place that we will later come to know that God has called us to something specific to do. Now, I've had visions before. Um, my first major vision was in 1990, where I had a, a vision of, uh, the only way that I can explain it is um, the return of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not going to share it today. Uh, there's other visions. Um, there's a vision of me at an older age, um, when my hair is already grey, also long in the vision and long beard and that ram's horn that happened to be a gift. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things in my life guys. Uh, it, uh, that's why it will be a sectional uh, testimony. Um, the Lord spoke to me about the ram's horn and then somebody just gifted me a ram's horn um, out of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, oh, Lord you're amazing. Um, so things like that will show up in visions and then what has happened lately, I suppose it's probably because I'm also getting, I've had recently had visions, but um, I suppose it's also because I'm getting slightly uh, on in years. And so probably a transition from 
from from visions to 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 dreams at some point however due to um an injury back in the 90s when i was hit with a baseball bat um and then of course the trauma that you briefly saw yesterday um there's certain things that have caused damage in my life so you know a lack of being able to remember dreams that those type of things so if i remember a dream usually it is it, it means something um but uh, the inability to put things in um in sequence in and you'll see it as we go through the testimony uh, that there's certain sections that I, I cannot quite tell you which one came first um uh, actually and, and and this is actually a major uh, interesting fact is, is I actually battle to remember things um, I don't have the best recall and so it is quite amazing that I'm that the Lord makes it possible for me to remember the things that is applicable to his word and for me to be able to call it out like that because in myself I don't have that ability um, based on the trauma and everything that I've gone through in my life, I've also suffered from uh, some some diagnosis, uh, for a lack of a, a better word. And, and the Lord has helped me overcome that. And I've actually never been healthier um, in my life than what I am right now. Um, and that is all from the Lord. Uh, it's not medication based, anything like that. So I don't know how much more there is that I can say that I can introduce myself to you. And the only reason I'm doing it is because the Lord said I had to. Um, I suppose you would like to know who you, who you are getting involved with when you read the blogs that I write or the or the notes that I'm writing on, uh, and I suppose there will be much more coming. Um, I suppose you want to be able to put a person to, to, to the face. I would personally, I would prefer for the screen just to be blank or, you know, show God's nature while, while we talk about God's word. I would prefer that. Um, but the Lord wants me to put my face out there. I hope it is worth it for you. Um, there was a stage that I would probably have lapped this up, <laughs> but not anymore. Um, I'm going to bring the video um, to a close. Um, I do, even, even though I'm not going to um, be reading, be reading up the word that I received this morning, uh, I will have to go back and pray and find out how is that. Maybe that will just be in writing, and it might even be um, censored because there's things that are specifically for me that I was uncomfortable from the beginning to do, <laughs> and the Lord just wanted um, to see if I would actually make an hour recording with it in it. So I'm going to give you the scriptures that I read today and I'm going to try and remind to put it on every um, video. So today is 2023, the seventh month, the sixth day, the fifth day of the week. And uh, the word, it came at uh, 9.15. So just from that, we know that uh, the time that was spent in reading and praying is approximately three hours. Just um I know there's some people that's going to ask, so Matt, how long does it take you to, to, to read these scriptures and to pray and to prepare before you start writing? Uh, this morning's case, it was um, three hours before I started writing. Um, today's scriptures were 2 Kings 14, 2 Chronicles 25, uh, Psalms 37, uh, Genesis 22 and 23, Romans 14 and Matthew 7 verse 8. So if you want to keep track, um, you know, uh, I'll do the breakup for you. 
So 2 Kings 14, 2 Chronicles 25, that will form part of my annual reading through the Word of God as it happened. Uh, so this, the sequence is different. Um, from here, um, I think we gonna be we're gonna be reading the book of Jonah tomorrow um, and then we'll probably get back to it so it it is as it happened and then um, I'm literally reading through Psalms like three times this year and we are this morning was Psalm 37 uh, then I'm also reading um, uh, through the different books of the Bible with Christ in focus uh, so that is for my personal use, but I'm also using it as part of this, this, this view back to where things are coming from and of what we are going uh, through at the moment. And then at the same time, uh, the Romans 14 uh, is our, just a standard from Matthew through to Revelations, reading through uh, the New Testament in a set period. It's not quite a year. Um, but it is uh, according to a, a set reading plan. Uh, then Matthew 7 verse 8 is the verse of the day out of the U Version Bible. So I hope that that brings uh, a bit of clarity to you guys and where this is going to go. Um, at first it was a very private thing. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, um, my comfort would be for it to have stayed there that it would be a private matter um, and then it became a thing of writing in faith which was very complicated because you're sitting almost with a pen there and you waiting for God to say something so that you can write it down and sometimes he will sit there and and, and the Lord will do this he, he, he will do it. He will take you into halfway into the sentence and then he say, all right, you write, write further. And then you sit there and you, you've got no idea how to write. So all these things play out and it is, it is a voice I know. It is, you come to know that voice and it is the very same voice that, that then speak to you and say, do you see that man? Do you see that man sitting there? He needs food or he needs clothes or go and pray for him or it's the same voice so it is not just your conscience <laughs> it's not the same thing a conscience is a completely different thing you sit in your car and you're nice and warm and you look at the person cold outside and you think oh my word he must be cold um, it's not the same thing um, um, as you get to know the voice of the Lord, you'll get into situations where you want to help and then the Lord will say, not that man. Not that man. Don't help him. And you don't have any idea why, but the Lord is insistent for you not to get involved. The Lord will tell you to keep quiet in certain circumstances, especially if you want to stand up for yourself. And um, the Holy Spirit will uh, tell you, don't do that. So, um, but it's the same voice. Uh, so the, this training period, even if all of this writing was just to prepare us for the things that is coming, when we're going to have to walk by faith in maybe different circumstances, our, life, our lives might depend on it. I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying, well, it kind of looks to be that way uh, at this stage. And... But we're not going to get into that today. There will be a time for that too, to get into all of those things. I would like to thank each and every one of you that is following at this stage. And I'm hoping to get to know you guys better as well. Um, I'm going to try to remain as actively involved as possible in answering questions, that type of thing, if that is uh, what this is supposed to be. I'm not really a teacher. Um, I'm more just here to point you back to Christ, point you back to the Word of God. You know, before you just believe what people tell you what is right, go and read it for yourself. And go back to the Word of God. If you want to know something, look for it in the Word of God. Um, pray about it. Wait on the Lord for an answer. Because things on the, things have changed. 
and things have changed. Um, let's just say that today we must be wary of those wolves in sheep clothing. So I'm going to finish it off here. Um, I am going to just say a prayer for um, for the uh, for the sake of this video and to uh, to end off this uh, video. Um, so uh, let's do this the right way. Almighty Father, I come to you tonight and I thank you for the opportunity to stand in your duty. Lord, and I thank you that your Holy Spirit guides me in, in all matters. Lord, I want to pray for each and every person that is watching this video, that you will speak into their circumstances and that you will answer their call when they call out to you. And Lord, I, I pray that you will speak to them especially at first in a way that they can perceive you, that they can understand that this is not of them, so that they can build that, that comfort and that trust and that assurance that you have built, built up in me. And, and, and I thank you again for that, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity. And Lord, where you sent, there, there we will go. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, Lord. As we forgive those that trespassed against us, and Lord, we pray that you will help us on this matter. Create in us a heart that can forgive, Lord. Make it possible, not for our sake, Lord, but for those for those that are that are trespassing against us. Let their forgiveness not be withheld from them. For you have forgiven us. So help us to forgive those that trespass against us, please, Lord. Lead us not into severe temptation. But deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom. Yes, Lord, even mine. I cede my crown to you, Lord. You know that. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. And um, I think we're going to be seeing more of each other as time goes on. May the Lord bless and keep you.